doesn't matter. There are days when I feel like I have everything figured out. Then, there are days in stark contrast where I wonder if I'll ever get the hang of this homemaking journey. I see other women with their sparkling clean homes, perfect little families, and serene lifestyles. They garden and bake and clean and sip high-end teas with such ease, leaving me feeling lost. How do they have it all figured out? How do they make it all look so simple? How does just one day of being out and about with a touch of depression creeping in leave me standing in a mess in the middle of my kitchen? It feels like life can unravel so quickly with everything piling up faster than I can manage. How is it even possible to keep life balanced when so many things are happening all at once? between caring for my loved ones, maintaining the house, and trying to find a moment for myself, it feels overwhelming. Do these women never feel like the work is piling up faster than they can wade through? Do they ever have days when they say, I can't do this today, I simply can't fit another thing in? I'm not angry, I'm just confused. They make it look so simple. What is it that they know that I don't? What is the secret that they have that the rest of us can't seem to grasp? Do they truly live this perfect life untouched by a single moment of imperfection? Or do they hide their struggles behind real, the carefully curated moments that paint the picture of effortless perfection? Behind those shiny clean homes and perfect families, there are likely little things they don't want me to see. Everyone has off days, and most people don't broadcast their struggles. Maybe that beautiful cup of tea is enjoyed after their tween dumped a pile of laundry down the stairs, and they just needed a minute to regroup. Maybe that perfect kitchen is the only clean room in the house that day. Perhaps while they present a flawless exterior, they miss out on the small, beautiful moments that make life truly special. Maybe they miss seeing their child nail the perfect flip on their trampoline or playing tug-of-war with their aging dog, whose days on this earth are far too few. Maybe in their quest for perfection, they miss out on those irreplaceable, imperfectly perfect moments that might make life so rich and so real. Maybe, just maybe, they wonder how we find the time to be so incredibly imperfectly perfect. We all have those days when we find ourselves standing in the mess we call life. It might not always be a physical mess like my messy kitchen. It could be figuring out how to afford food, keeping the lights on, or understanding your child who is grouchy for reasons you can't comprehend. There are so many messes. Life finds ways to build and shape us through these challenges. I was once asked why I publicly show my mess to people who don't know me. The answer is simple. I want to be real. I want you all to know that we all have days like this. I've had huge wins. I've had some cruddy days as well. There's nothing to be gained by hiding what's real. By being open and honest, I have received so many tips and ideas from this community. I've felt the camaraderie of all of you sharing your struggles too. And the joy from someone telling me how I've helped them. I have always said that the truth is the truth. Nothing good comes from pushing it under the rug. Am I ashamed that my kitchen got messy again? Of course. But I am super proud that I stood right back up and cleaned it, even when it was an overwhelming mess. I am proud that it's no longer a regular thing. I am proud that it was so much easier this time to reset. Being real and showing our imperfections helps us connect support each other, and realize that we're not alone. Embracing the messy moments in life and learning from them is what truly makes us stronger. I think all of us need to realize that every step, whether it's forwards or backwards, is part of our journey. It's important to acknowledge the effort that it takes to keep going even when things get tough. And sharing our vulnerabilities doesn't make us weak, it makes us strong. It takes courage to be open about our struggles. That Courage can inspire others to do the same. 
And the support that we receive from our community is invaluable. It's a reminder that we are not alone and that there is always someone willing to lend a hand or offer a kind word. Each challenge we face teaches us something new. Embracing these lessons helps us grow and become more resilient. And on being kind to ourselves, it's okay to have bad days. Being kind and patient with ourselves during these times is so crucial. Self-compassion goes a long way in helping us recover and to move forward. And the one thing that I have always really loved about posting here and sharing my journey is creating real connections. By being authentic, we foster genuine connections with others. These connections are built on trust and understanding, and they enrich our lives in meaningful ways. In sharing my journey, I hope to remind you that it is okay to be imperfect, to struggle, and to have messy days. What's important is that we keep moving forward, support one another, and find strength in our shared experiences. So let me ask you, what did you do today to be kind to yourself, compassionate? Did you let yourself off the hook for something? Did you treat yourself well? Because those things are so important. Today, I didn't really beat myself up. I let myself feel what I was feeling. And then I got up and I decided it was time to deal with the task at hand. But I got in some TV watching time with the hubby. I got in time with the little. And I spent time puttying around the house and answering all your comments. I actually caught up on all the comments that some of them were nine days old. I'm pretty proud of that, you know. And I'm pretty proud of this channel. Of the people that are on it that go out of their way to share their stories and, you know... To help one another, I noticed that I'm seeing more of people liking each other's comments and commenting to them. And I ask each one of you that if you see somebody on here struggling and having a bad day, if you see that maybe I've missed their comment and you think that they should hear from me, you can email me and let me know that the comment is there because I want to see those comments. And as this community grows, I really hope to see each of you reaching out to one another when somebody has a bad day to help them the same way that you've reached out to help me because that's what a community does. How do you deal with a room that's messy, full of clutter, and just totally trashed? Do you have any certain way you go about it or do you just kind of plow through and get it done? If you ever notice when I'm cleaning, I generally always start with the trash. Tonight I started with the bottles and then the trash and then, you know, scraping the dishes and stacking them and filling, you know, getting the sink empty so I could wash it and filling the sink with hot water. You know, I, I do these things in an order. And for me, even though certain things might be a little bit more work at the offset, it actually makes the whole thing much easier. So how do you tackle a messy room when you're dealing with it? So like I told you guys the other day, I went to the doctor and of course they weighed me and I got my weight and I figured I'd share it with you guys. Not that I'm overly proud, but you know, I think there needs to be a starting point. When I stepped on the scale, I was exactly 250 pounds. Now, I'm not really surprised by that. Actually, I am because I thought I was a bit heavier, but I'm not surprised by it because my weight for the last quite a few years has fluctuated between 230 and 250 pounds. So I'm at the height of the highest of what I've been, but I'm not at the lowest of what I had been. So I have a starting point. And I'm thinking that I will pick a day <clears throat> every week to do a weigh-in. 
and I will do that way in on here and I will share with you what my current weight is. I think it's a good way to stay accountable and I think that you know if I'm going to share the journey I may as well share the journey and share the entire thing with you so that hopefully I can inspire somebody else to lose weight or you know whatever they need to do for their health. Tonight's trash night, so there's no better time than the present to get all the crap out of the refrigerator that needs to be thrown away, get my bowls out, get them cleaned out and washed, and just get everything out of there that does not belong. And I stuck my hands in what I assume was syrup from when Bella had had pancakes from McDonald's and she must have put the syrup packet on top of the bowl <laughs> and it spilled. Surprise! But, yeah, and any soda that's left in here is going to get dumped out, and the bottles are going to go to recycling. Like I told you in the last video, we get five cents back per bottle that we pay in, so we try to always bring them back and get our money back that we paid in. It's a program that works because nobody likes to throw their money away. And tomorrow I'll mix together some hot water with some Dawn and I'll wash down the inside of the fridge. Just wasn't feeling doing it tonight and it wasn't that bad so I wasn't about to worry about it. I was just glad to get everything out of it that did any longer need to be there. had to fight this bag out of the trash can. You can't see, but I had my knee inside of the trash can, holding it down so I can pull the bag out. And on to filling up the next bag. Here we go. I try to be good about saving leftovers. The problem is I don't think anybody really actually eats them. So <laughs> I don't know why I bother. It just makes things harder in the long run. I mean, I'm pretty sure the dogs would like to eat them, but they can't. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> Do you know I'm looking and I can't 
help but smile Do you know how much I love you? You put my favorite song on I put my feet up And we just sing along And I can't help but feeling Just loving this moment Can we stay here forever? I'm loving this moment Can we stay here together? If I could stop the time Don't you know that I would Cause I'm just loving I have this one fly in the kitchen, and it will not leave. I cannot catch it, and it is driving me insane. I almost had it on the sticky trap that was on the window, and it touched it barely and flew away. I'm telling you, I've chased this thing down with newspapers and fly swatters and spray and everything else, and it just keeps darting away. I am going to catch this fly at some point here and get rid of this thing. It's driving me nuts. I know, I know, use the right product for the job, but let me tell you, it brought the shine back to this contact paper that I haven't seen in a while. And I also use it on my stainless steel, which I know is a big no-no. I've done it for a long time and I've never actually had any problems, but I don't really advise anybody doing it. I know a friend of mine told some people that she cleaned her refrigerator with glass cleaner on Facebook and... Um, all the do-gooders told her that it was a big no and harassed her until she took the post down. So I'm not advising you use glass cleaner for anything but glass, but it's just something, it's a bad habit. And I should use the right product for the job, but sometimes I just use what's already in my hand. I said I'm a homemaker. I never said I was a perfect one, right? I just realized that I still haven't made a new vinyl for my um, KitchenAid mixer, so I gotta figure out what I'm gonna put on there next. She sure does shine up nice though. And I clean the top of my stove with it too. Another no-no. But it works. <laughs> Actually, no, I take that back. It didn't work because there was a spot towards the front that was kind of greasy. And I really had to scrub to get it off. So the truth is, if I had used the right product, the job would have gone way smoother. So 
I guess I guess it's a lesson learned in reality. It simply made the job harder than it needed to be. And actually, I think I cut out the part where I gave it extra scrubbing because it took too long. Or maybe I didn't cut that part out. I am doing it again. <laughs> it's it's ridiculous. In all honesty, if I had used some LA's Totally Awesome, it would have all come off within a couple of swipes. You know, it's funny. When we took an apartment, we lived in Lisbon for a while, and when we took the downstairs apartment, and we moved in, it had all brand new shiny stainless steel appliances. It had a Whirlpool refrigerator, a Whirlpool stove, and an Amana dishwasher. And all were stainless steel. And they were actually the first stainless steel appliances that I ever had been in charge of cleaning. And when I realized that every time you touch it, it leaves a fingerprint and everything shows up on them, I hated them hated 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 them and I was constantly cleaning them and you have to clean with the grain and you know so forth and so on and I was very anal because it wasn't mine about using the right product I used stainless steel cleaner and buffed it out and I vowed that when we left there and we got a different place that I would not would not have stainless steel appliances again I was going to go with black or white or something like that, that I would never do the stainless steel again. And when we got here, the appliances that were in the house were trashy. They worked, but they were white. And to be honest with you, I was kind of glad they were white. And after a while, we had been here, the stove kept, like if you leaned against the handle of the stove and touched another part of it with your hand, it would shock you. So it was very evident that we had to get rid of them and buy new appliances a lot sooner than we had planned to. Well, <laughs> into Lowe's we go to pick out appliances. And what do we do? We go directly to the stainless steel. And that is what we bought. And that is what I have had ever since. So... I must like it a lot more than I think I do. I like the looks of it, actually. Just, I'm not a big fan of the work it takes to clean it. But I do like the way they look. So, there they are. And, yeah, I have stainless steel appliances again. And probably will buy more stainless steel after. Because I replaced my stove this year. And next year the refrigerator is getting replaced. And where they're being replaced staggered, guess what's going to happen? Mm-hmm. They're going to be stainless steel. <laughs> I will tell you, though, that we have had very good luck with the brand Hisense for refrigerator and stove. When we first bought our appliances, I bought a French door, door. I believe it was a Samsung. And about a month in, we came downstairs, and it was blinking. And it looked like, from the living room, that the cops were outside. And I came into the kitchen, and it was actually the refrigerator doing it. And it never ran again. And Lowe's replaced it, and I got, I believe it was a Whirlpool. And within a month or two, that stopped cooling. So they replaced it with this Hisense, and it has been fine ever since. My Hisense is about five years old. My stove is uh, not even six months old. And I will replace my refrigerator with another Hisense, just a bigger one, and I would like the French doors on it. So some people call this sweeping the floor. What I actually call this is trying to keep the dog from eating whatever I'm sweeping up off the floor. Which can be a real challenge. Because she thinks everything is food. So the minute she hears the boom, out she comes. Her chubby little butt and her little buddy with her. And keeping them out of it is half the job. No. 
again, just in case you're wondering why I'm using my porch broom in the house. I can't find the other broom. I don't have any clue where it went. I think it took off with a dustpan. I'm telling you, it's always something in this house. I've also lost one of my camera batteries, which means now I'm working with one battery. So if my battery dies, that means I have to let it charge and then resume. Thankfully, it's got a pretty good life on it and it doesn't die too often, but I really need to find the broom and especially my battery. Who remembers the trend that was going around the internet when people were making their brooms stand up? saying it was something to do with the moon cycle or whatever it was and there were pictures and video floating all around the internet with the broom standing up. I showed Bella that one day and she was pretty impressed that I could make the broom stand up. Can you? I am on the home stretch now and I am so glad that I am. I love having the kitchen cleaned back up and having my sink shiny and not stepping on things on the floor. It is so much better. Oh, and has anyone tried this new game, It Smells Like Watermelon? The smell of this stuff is so incredibly good. I love it. I'm not a big fan of game dish soap, but I really do love this. In looking at this video, I think tomorrow I'm going to do some more decluttering in here. Even things just as simple as the windowsill and some other little areas that I've noticed while I was cleaning that just need some touching up and cleaning up and decluttering. I mean, I really am past the idea of wanting anything on the windowsill anymore. The sign up on the window that says that this video surveillance can go on the outside of the house. That's what they were originally bought for. Just nobody's hung them up. So I'll send my son out tomorrow to just put them up on the sides of the house. So that people are aware that they're being recorded if they come on the property. So anyway, I'm going to get this laundry folded up, which is always fun. I am still behind on laundry. I tell you guys this every single time. I've been managing like a load, maybe two a day, and that's it. It's not even that I don't like to do laundry. There's two problems. Number one, I don't like putting it away. And number two, I'm not good at delegating things. And that's something that I really need to work on, is delegating things for people to do. Not waiting for them to get the hint that they should do it, but saying, you need to do X, Y, Z now so that, you know, things can continue. I'm really bad at delegating. I always have been. It's something I need to work on. In come those neighbors of mine. Well, neighbors, no. It's my son, daughter-in-law, and their little baby, Weston. His birthday is today. He is one. So happy birthday, baby Weston. And he is almost walking. He can take a few steps here and there. And apparently he was on the phone with his other Grammy and said, Grammy, no fair. I'll wait. I'm always last anyway. It's all the more special when they finally say it. And how was the weather where you were today? Would you believe that again today it rained? And not only did it rain, it absolutely poured again. I don't know where all the rain's even coming from. Well, my husband would tell me it's coming from the sky, but you know what I mean. I am really looking forward to having a string of sunny, sunny, warm days 
and hopefully some of the humidity goes away because this rain is certainly not helping with the humidity. In fact, I was looking at dehumidifiers for today for inside the house, and I think the next time I get paid, that is one of the things I am definitely going to be picking up. They say that it helps cool the temperature down just by making the air drier. It doesn't physically change the temperature, but it changes the humidity, which makes the air feel cooler. So I'm definitely going to be looking into that because my air conditioners are just working so hard in all this humidity. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you found some encouragement and some useful insight. Let's keep lifting each other up and sharing our journeys. If you have any thoughts or tips or comments, I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Until next time, happy cleaning, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.